All right, so we are headed live here. Welcome once again to the podcast presented by Trinity, as usual. Yeah. My name is Cody LaCroix, one of the co-founders of Trinity, alongside my co-founder, of course, Mr. Lloyd Biro. What's up? And joining us via Skype today is one of the many legends of the industry. When you think uh, MC, when you think scooter contest host, there's only one name that comes to mind, and that is, of course, Mr. Neckbeard, a.k.a. Jake Hershey. Jake, my man, how's it going? Hey, thanks for the intro, man. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, I've been I've been watching the episodes, so uh, I dig what you guys are doing and uh, keeping it consistent, and that's that's important. I really appreciate it, and you know this one's not necessarily a, a fame grab or anything like that. We're trying to do this to to be able to share the stories that we feel need to be told, and I'm sure you've got a ton of those. So we're super stoked to have you on today. Oh yeah, man, it's been my pleasure. Just uh, you know, going to Jay and Silent Bob premiere tonight, brand new movie. Get to meet Kevin Smith and and Jason. Uh, you know, Jay and the Silent Bob. So that's going to be really cool. Of course. And you're headed there with uh, with one or a few of your roommates, yes? Uh, Hammy's coming with me. Cool. Um, I originally bought the tickets uh, as a birthday present to a female friend that was going to come out here and go with me, but uh, she bailed. So uh, Hammy's my date tonight. So Hammy's the date. Definitely a hot date. <laughs> and uh, what uh, what's your living situation right now? For anyone who doesn't know, obviously you're living with both Johns, right? Yeah. And yeah, is it just you three right now? No, oh no, our house is jam packed, dude. We got, <laughs> uh, it's John, John Dev, uh, Hammy, um, both their girlfriends, and uh, Ernie Young, um, infamous for uh, punching Scooter Brad in the back of the head one night, and uh, his girlfriend too now. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps we'll get into that a little bit later so obviously things are, are jam-packed but you guys are in san diego we're we're freezing our butts off here in the snow and you guys over there it's it's pretty warm most I'm of the year i'm cold too man i'm cold <laughs> oh no you don't know like cold 50, it's 50 degrees fahrenheit which is I nonsense know, to us <laughs> fahrenheit it's probably like you guys would be in shorts and a t-shirt and i'm like in my beanie and hood up Still wearing shorts though. <laughs> <laughs> well, shout well, out to the snowboarding uh, next week. If I go snowboarding next week, I'll bundle up because it'll be like really cold. <laughs> oh hell yeah! And uh, have you had the chance to try out an Eretic yet, or you're just going to be snowboarding? Try what? The Eretics, the, the snow scooters. Oh, oh the snow scoot? No, I haven't. Um, I haven't like been anywhere that I'd actually be able to do that, and I've never been in contact with anybody who's actually owned one. Oh yeah, no way. <laughs> well, well, if you ever make it down, we'll but definitely take fun. you out. It's, want, it's hella I, fun. Dude, yeah, I definitely want to try it. It looks like fun, and uh, I love snowboarding. I mean, San so Diego's sure, the source you know, for snow scooters, really. Yeah. They're all at uh, the Dissidents Warehouse, and there's a few left, but they're moving quickly this year, man. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, Cyril actually just asked me to like work for him this week or last week or something to help him like unload it, their container they got and like start shipping it out. Ah, cool. But I was like working some other job at the time, so I had to say no. Damn, um, let's let's get right into that. Since because then I, cause you huh? you had posted about like quitting a painting job, and I wasn't even sure if you were serious or not. So so did you actually yeah. recently quit your painting job? And if so, like what was your yeah? What was so your head I was, at? Yeah, I was like painting a house for like the last two months, um, and it, you know it paid pretty good. But uh, like the guy I was working for is like <laughs> mentally unstable, and it was really annoying. That's always fun. Uh, working for him. Right. And, uh, yeah, and then I, I just went to Vegas for Thanksgiving, and I played poker for like four nights in a row, and didn't have a single losing session. Ended up profiting almost three thousand oh. bucks. So on so on Monday I woke up with my alarm like ready to go to work, and I was taking a shower and I was just like fuck this, <laughs> 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 like I'm quitting that. I'm I'm just gonna do the Aztec and play poker for a living and. Yeah, the last I I went out. I've actually been playing with Robbie Mir. He is actually a really good poker player. Oh, cool! And uh, yeah, so we've been playing, and uh, I'm definitely gonna play with him a lot more. Um, yeah, and made more money this week doing that. So I'm just gonna do that, man. I, I really like it. It's fun, and it makes me more money, and I don't have to hate my life every day that well, I wake up. So that's cool. And obviously, in <laughs> yeah. Vegas, you're playing live, right? But uh, I think you also yeah, play yeah, quite yeah. a bit online I, I as am well. Here too now. Yeah, I, yeah, I played a lot online uh, this year and made some money. Um, but I honestly just like am so tired of just sitting in my house for ten hours just to win a tournament, right? Um, which doesn't always happen. Too, I could sit here for eight hours and make no money. Hmm. If I go play live, it's much more enjoyable. I'm out of my house. Right. I'm talking to people, meeting people, and making consistent money because I think that it's way easier to do that. In it's, person, it's, it's an easy. Game. 
Yeah, yeah, it's a much easier game if you know what the hell you're doing. Right, and how long have you been playing poker for, and at what point did you really start taking it more serious? Um, I like I really started getting into poker when I was like probably 14 years old. I'm 28, <laughs> 28 now, so that's like 14 years. But right. um, started taking it more seriously like two and a half, three years ago maybe. And then this year I like actually got like a training course and stuff and um, – in June, I made like it was like forty five hundred in profit when I went to the World Series, and then online the next month I made like seven grand. Uh, so like the training course paid off, and that's when I can say I started taking it a lot more seriously, and like you know figuring out just like learning shit that I had no idea of before, and you know before I was just a uh, ATM, I would just give away my money basically. Right, and now you're <laughs> now you're in the now you're in the real thing. You're you're throwing it down. Yeah. So next now year, I, obviously, now I identify the. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, um, I was gonna say now I I identify the people that are the ATMs <laughs> <laughs> and I take their money, <laughs> expose <of> them. <laughs> so uh, obviously, yeah. you'll be playing a bit more um, poker so next year. And you're uh, you're working at Aztec, well, um, technically at Brillo Brands, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we started Brillo Brands uh, based on the fact that Turnstile was, uh, you know, shitting their pants and you know, hitting the showers. And uh, <laughs> mm. I hit up I hit up Dom and told him that we should take we should start our own distribution. So we did Brillo Brands, and we distribute Aztec and only Aztec right now. Hopefully, we can uh, grow it into a lot more than that. But uh, yeah, I basically just do our wholesale account managing, mm-hmm. um, selling the shops all over North America. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been really great. It's like every time we get a shipment, it sells out in like forty-eight hours. Damn. That's that's always good, which is <laughs> nuts. Yeah, it is always good. But then I have a lot of free time <laughs> for poker. <laughs> it, it, takes, like, it takes like six months. It takes like six months for us to get an order. Yep. Um, and I'm just uh, commission based only pay. Right. So if I don't have stuff to sell, I am not making any money, yeah. essentially. Um, but it's I'm not complaining about it because. Who, who would complain about a container or, or two of product selling out instantly? It just means that our brand is doing well and people are loving what we do. Hell yeah, I'm, I'm stoked to see that. And I know uh, everyone in Montreal was super hyped on the products and we're excited to, to, to get more back. I always love seeing an Aztec deck with a Trinity Fender. You know, it's it, it warms my yeah. heart quite a bit. Good combo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice combo for sure. And I'm definitely yeah, trying to grab a, a, a Lucid this time around because I actually missed them the first time around. Like you say, they, yeah. out, they sold out for you guys really there fast on Brillo, but they yeah. sold out fast at the actually, shop too. Yeah, the, the Lucids are like the only thing that we actually still have in stock other than like we have some uh, older products and stuff, but the, from the stuff we're getting, uh, it's actually coming in tomorrow. Mm-hmm. The Lucids are the only thing that we haven't sold out of yet because we bought so many this time around. Yeah, <laughs> but they sense. are like they're still going so fast. Like people are still ordering them constantly. Yep. I, and, I, uh, I, the, I, these Lucids this this time around, they were uh, Dom like made them stronger uh, because there were some issues last round with like bananaing and stuff. Right. And. Um, now they're reinforced. He did some magical computer. I don't know how he does. I'm sure you guys are into that. <laughs> the, design, <laughs> we, the design side. I'm not too savvy with the design, design side, optimization. But, let's just call yeah. it that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he's he's kind of like so, an evil, evil, evil magician with that, eh? Yeah, he made a couple clicks, typed a couple keys, and now the deck is better than it was before. Magic, which is hard to believe because it's already the best deck I've ever written. We've got I, only about really, a handful of people in the world that are actually able to do that in our yep. industry. It's really, really cool when uh, we can see yeah. so much success come from that that ability to have the person that's writing it actually designing it makes a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. That's the, that's why it's awesome because Dom is a scooter rider. He's been a scooter rider for a long time. And the amount that he has progressed in just the last year alone because of the products he's designed, mm-hmm. it's like unfathomable. Like this guy should be a paid pro. <laughs> well, that's, it's, it's really cool. And I, I've kind of touched on this before uh, a little bit on the podcast, but I know for us, uh, and obviously you, you still ride it. And I was stoked to see you put up a clip either today or yesterday. So we still get right. out there when we can. And I know Dom does too. Uh, but well, it, I've had a lot of opportunities to get out there that I've turned down. So I, 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 <laughs> I can't say that I get out there again. I, I should get out there more than I am, though, and I'll I'll admit that. Well, what's what's cool is like for us, I guess, seeing a, a product come to life, and I, I'm sure it's similar mm-hmm. for you seeing your product sell out through your distribution that you've opened up. It's yeah. it's the only feeling that I can compare to learning a new trick. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean it's like you did you did something right, 
and or you're doing something right because you you have to be uh, like like I said like with what you guys are doing with the podcast you got to be consistent you have to consistently deliver um, and not just not just good product but good content as well you know mm-hmm. it's all just it's all got to line up and uh, it it seems that people are really digging what Dom's up to and what the team's up to. And speaking of the team, we got Jake's video coming out on Friday, Friday, man, I'm which stoked. is going to be unreal. I have not seen it yet, which I'm mad about because where's hmm. my link at? <laughs> it's unlisted <laughs> somewhere for sure. Oh, definitely. Shout out to yeah. Jake, man. He's got to send yes. the other Jake the link. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody asked in the Aztec chat, like, can we get that link? And uh, there was no response. So <laughs> <laughs> might be out of luck. But, uh, you know, Jake's a nutball. And uh, I'm sure he did quite a few thangers. That are gonna blow uh, people's minds. <laughs> oh, un- unquestionably <laughs> for sure. I'm I'm super excited for Jake's video, and uh, I I know that when you were working at Turnstyle, you were doing sales, and we did a lot of warrant. You did a lot of warranties and stuff like that. Uh, but you're also team manager for. <laughs> so we did a lot of warranties. <laughs> <laughs> How I mean, much of your time was that? <laughs> Actually, quite a lot. Oh god! <laughs> well, I mean, you, that, well, that's just showing that you know you believed in what your your products were supposed to be doing, and at least it wasn't we were dodging a lot of warranties. We were doing them, you know. No, and and Turnstile was was growing quite a bit in a time where the industry needed a distributor to kind of mm-hmm. step in that way. Uh, I think yeah. we were a bit over ambitious in some of the productions they ordered and and all that, like kind of keeping the projections a bit too unrealistic, but. Really, like yeah. a lot of things wouldn't be the way they are today if it wasn't for their their impact, and you know, it kept you mm-hmm. working in the industry for this many years. Uh, you know, gotta gotta yeah. have some respect for for all of that. I'm you know, back that when yeah, I was totally. running QC and scooters, I mean, that's where I got the first yeah. Aztec forks I, I picked up for the shop. You yeah. know, like you know, yeah. what, back that's when Aztec sure Dom, was just the Dom forks. Can say, uh, <laughs> Dom can be thankful for it as well because uh, yeah, all he had was a, basically a fork and. Then uh, he went to Turnstile and said, these are all the products I'm going to make. Do you want to buy them? <laughs> mm-hmm. And they said, yeah. And that was like the first real run of products that Dom was able to get done. Uh, and Frank was a good boss, the owner of Turnstile. Like Frank was a great guy to work for. And sometimes we butt heads on stuff. But And I would just let him know how I felt. And uh, he would respect that. And I'd respect him even if we disagreed with each other. Right. But um, I, I was definitely kicking him in the ass a lot about some <laughs> things that that I didn't like. And, you know, a lot of times he would change it he would change it up and, uh, actually listen to me, which was really good. Cool. Um, and you know, it was a fun ride six, six years or so. It was a oh, yeah. fun ride. And I heard he did, um, I heard he did a speech recently at like a business conference. Hmm. Um, and it, his speech was about, uh, businesses failing. But, uh, so he, he talked about turnstile and, uh, the biggest topic of his conversation was like how much fun he actually had uh, doing what we did and how much he really enjoyed working with the people that he did, which would be like me, Dan and Ryan yep. um, and Cole, uh, Cole Greg, as we, we touched on before we started this. Yeah, shout out to Cole, uh, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Frank did. Frank really did enjoy doing what we did and uh, it lasted as long as it could. And now it's time for the core to come out and take over. Yeah, it's and, something you know, new. Now that the dust is settled, what do you think was the the main reason Turnstile didn't succeed when it had a ton of potential in the early stages? Like, what kind yeah. of lesson can we take business wise, but also for our industry? Um, so there was quite a few things. Um, the biggest things was uh, cost of the operation itself. So instead of owning a warehouse, Turnstile leased space in a warehouse. Mm. So they paid for the, they paid for all the square footage of how, you know, we had so many products. Like I don't even know how much square footage it took up, but right. you pay for every square foot that you're, that you're taking up in the warehouse. And on top of that, the warehouse does the fulfilling too. So then you have to pay for their fulfilling costs. Right. And it was, it was upwards of costing 20 to $30,000 a month. That's, mm, that's a, a big month. overhead. That's a big overhead. No, that, a that's month. a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. So that was a huge player in it. Right. Um, and then I'm sure we spent a little too much money having fun at Interbike and stuff. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Inter- Interbike itself costs like thirty thousand just to get a space. Oh wow. And, or twenty thousand just to get like a 
it was like uh, a little booth, like a double wide, <laughs> a double, <laughs> a double wide booth. Right. Um, and then you have to pay like another thirty thousand to have it designed. And then we all fly out to Vegas and we all eat great the whole week and mm. really enjoy ourselves. And we get like what uh, two new customers for, from it. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's, nobody's buying more because you're at Interbike. That's just not how it works. And spending right. the company money on on fun activities is not. You know, although yeah. it's really expensive, it's not a waste. Everybody's getting a great time out of it. And I think Kevin and Cyril, with their whole operation, are the, mm-hmm. the perfect example for this. Like, yep. They don't make a ton of money from their worldwide operations, right. but they've been able to have all these amazing experiences. They get to yeah. travel all around the world, do all these expeditions. Like, They have true freedom. And I think that's, yeah, like, exactly. that's the objective behind it is to get to a point where your, your business can kind of guide you to the experiences that you're looking for. Um, but yeah, you know, exactly. you guys got to do they, a bit of that. So <laughs> that's dope. Yeah. They for sure got it going on over there. And, um, yeah, clearly they're not in it to be rich and famous and make a bunch of money, whatever. But, uh, yeah, they just want to live and live and be able to sustain themselves while they're here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if, if you're trying to become rich, the scooter <laughs> industry is probably not top of the list of like potential places to go do that. So if you right, are right. in it to get rich, I would many people strongly have advise came in with off. that, yeah, I, and have left quickly. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't take long to weed <laughs> out those. Tell me, I'm that not are... making a million dollars this year. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> my projections were <laughs> off. You said I could just slap logos on Chinese <laughs> products. Like yeah, I really... have to design the products. Well, this, no, I mean, it's crazy. Do that. Some, of the, some of the brands I hear, like the riders, demand like three thousand dollars a month, and I was like, "Are you freaking kidding me?" The, nah. the the highest paid like BMX riders don't even get anything near that from a factory sponsor. It's it's literally just unfair. Like you just you can't do that. You, There's no way that any company can sustain that. No, if and, if that's their demands, they clearly don't understand the overall picture of, of <laughs> like like right. it, it's it's just a a, num- a matter of numbers and you know right. obviously the riders have in mind that I would like to make enough just by riding to you know be able to live and unfortunately yeah, well, they're probably I, not gonna. Yeah, unfortunately, at this point in time, <laughs> short of logging and finding other additional income sources, it's pretty tough. And unless you're Ryan Williams, who's you know got his Nitro Circus shows, which are oh, yeah. a big part of helping him get by, I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's very very hard. And there's a couple big brands out there, but they're not paying their riders, you know, enough to really make a decent living off of. And I think that's something that a lot of people need to to understand. Right, and the majority of professional riders that do deserve to make a living off of it aren't going to until we get outside industry sponsors that support us with the with the financial backing because they're the ones doing millions of dollars in sales every year not the scooter companies 100% the, you know the red bulls and stuff like that and that'll come with time it's, it'll it will take time though and people need yep. to stop thinking about how it needs to happen right now why why can't it happen right now and if it doesn't happen right now I'm out it's like, nah, you got you to gotta ride it out, baby. You got to be patient. You got oh, to yeah. drive, drive the boat. Just <laughs> keep driving the boat. Well, I think, it's, I think as soon as we have one, like once there's one, the floodgates sort of open, yeah, right? Because once, totally. once, say, and I'm obviously Ryan to be like, the, if I'm a marketing guy at Red Bull and they're like, all right, we need a scooter, dude. It's a pretty easy, like, to walk into a meeting and pitch Ryan because, you know, of the following and his connections with Nitro Circus and Travis Pastrana, yeah. all that. But as soon as right. Red Bull's got one, then hopefully Monster and Rockstar and all the others are going to, you know, join Pap. in as well. Mm-hmm. But it takes that. It takes that first one though. Oh, we're getting tight with Pabs, man. We've had <laughs> a few, uh, to Pabs. few collaborations, and we're, are they we're looking for some with more. Cans? With cans? Are they sending you cans? Not for the podcast, but we we have worked with them in the past, and as as long as we give them enough uh, notice, they're usually on board to. Well, you see to my grip tape, right? All right, let's plug it. Yo, everybody, PBR is the beer to drink. <laughs> PBR is in Arizona, man. Yeah, Lloyd's sick, That's so the, he's drinking Arizona. Hear that, but. PBR, send me a case. <laughs> <laughs> there Turlo we go. Pad, California. <laughs> yeah, got to work on some more projects with these guys. But they were really cool. Like, they were one of the first brands I talked to at uh, Jackalope that was like, yeah, we'd actually consider sponsoring scooter riders. So, <laughs> yep. you know, we'll sick. see where that conversation goes, but... We should definitely pick it up at some point. Oh yeah, fighting a good fight, dude. Oh yeah, buddy. for sure. So we uh, well, we did the is like Nitro Circus is doing a lot of good stuff for us now too. Like World Games is obviously great, but this past weekend we did uh, or last weekend, not this past one, but the one before, uh, we did the Nitro Junior World Games, 
which was presented by Hot Wheels. Right. Uh, <laughs> I, got, I got a sweet hat. Oh, man. Hot Boom, Hot Wheels. That is nice. <laughs> yeah. It is nice, and I got I got like a fanny bag too. It's, <laughs> it says Hot Wheels, but uh, yeah, they're they're super stoked to um, like bring the youth up with like uh, good like events like the Junior Games because it really puts a spotlight on these young kids that are shredding and they're like going to be the next level. They're going to be the future. It's going to be like when the Bones Brigade before it was the Bones Brigade where Tony Hawk and Steve Cab and all these dudes were just killing it at all the contests. And they were like 13, 14 years old. And then, you know, overnight they became idols. Yep. They became like kids that were worshipped because of their abilities. And uh, I talked to Trip Taylor about this for a while. He's the main guy over at Nitro Circus, to, uh, one of the big producers. Uh, I think he's actually the president now. Oh, yeah. Um, but he also, he also made all the Jackass movies and stuff. Uh, My man. And, Small yeah, world. you know, <laughs> Cody, you know, trip from uh, World Games. Yep. Um, and that's what he was saying is he's trying to make it so these kids become idolized. Like, he, th- there needs to be a place for that. Um, and that, yeah, they'll be like the next generation of like big contest park kids, and they just want to shine a spotlight on them. And they gave them money. Like they gave, they gave the top three some money. That's awesome. Because how many scooter but contests not, have we seen that have? About. A- Oh, I'll just talk about the results because it's not out yet. All right. But uh, how many contests have we seen, especially, you know, maybe a little bit more back in the day where it was like this division, that division, and the pro division. But then in the pro division, they're not giving out cash. That always really, really <laughs> hit like a, a, a specific chord with me. It always really bothered me. You can call it expert. Yeah. You can call it whatever you want, but you can't call it pro if they're not competing for. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, it's cool. Exactly. It's cool that they're pushing the envelope that way. Oh, yeah, totally. And, uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's cool to see, and I think that they also give the winner like a trip to the actual World Games in Wales. Oh no way! That's cool. Is, it, yeah, like a VIP experience and everything, which is super cool. Sick. And it's like Hot, Wheel, Hot Wheels is on board, so I'm sure they got a shitload of money, so they can <laughs> throw it our way all they want. Yeah, Hot Wheels I'll, does I'll these take... crazy races where they have these full size Hot Wheel cars jumping. <laughs> over like really trucks like you should check it out on youtube man it's like, it's, r- i saw some style it's it's insane <laughs> like I, I couldn't believe it when i watched it you got these cars freaking flipping in the air like i saw yeah. a mini cooper backflip once like, <laughs> no way it's it's nuts <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> That's pretty unreal. Hot Wheels is killing it. And it's cool to see Nitro working with them and uh, touching yeah. on the topic of Nitro. Obviously, I was lucky enough to go to the World Games this year. Thanks to, of course, you. And again, thanks for that. It was amazing. And hopefully we'll be headed back yeah, dude. next year. Yeah, I but thought, I thought it was a beautiful experience and uh, and broadcast. So oh, it was it was wonderful. We absolutely crushed it, too. Like, no, to no doubt on the show. You can do whatever you want, my man. All right. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So obviously that was my first time, but it was actually your third, right? Uh, I think so. And how it was third. how exactly did you get connected with Nitro Circus? Because it's one thing to be emceeing a contest at a skate park; it's a whole nother to be in a broadcasting yeah. booth working with Nitro Circus. So how did yeah. you get your start with them? And that was like a that was a huge jump for me too. Like like you said, just talking on a microphone at a skate park that's like light work compared to like doing the the whole headset thing with mm-hmm. the production team talking to you and everything while you're trying to talk. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> I talked to Ryan Williams when I first found out about world games coming up, right. uh, the first year. And he was like, yeah, man, I'll, uh, I'll mention it to somebody and, uh, they, and I'll just give him your name for the commentator. Cause they were, they were asking, or did he hit me up? I can't remember. I think he might've hit me up and said, they asked if I knew, or if he knew a commentator and, uh, he told him me, right. which I'm eternally grateful for. Of course. Shout out to um, Ryan, man. Yeah, he hooked it up. And then I took it one step further because I didn't hear anything. And it was like getting really close to the date it was supposed to be. And so I went to the qualifiers <laughs> in Paris, the BMX qualifiers. And I knew like Brandon Lupos would be there and stuff. And obviously we're good friends from back when, when he used to scooter. Um, so I went, I just went out to the BMX practice, just pulled up on him. And uh, I asked Brandon, I was like, yo, who do I, who's in charge of like the world games and like all this stuff? Who should I talk to? Yep. And he told me Dave Mateus, that guy over there. And uh, I just went up to him and I was like, hey, Dave, like I'm Jake. Nice to meet you. Uh, I think Ryan might have told me about you. I'm the commentator guy, blah, blah, blah. And he gave me his car and he's just like, yeah, man, hit me up. Like, let's make sure that that happens. And it did. And uh, yeah, it worked out. Um, 
and it is a it, it's a crazy experience like getting getting the first year i was pissing my pants man i was so scared that was me this and, year <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> like I'm, yeah now now i'm chilling but uh yeah that first time is always like oh boy even this past weekend like raymond was in the booth with me and he was like we, he was like can we do a run through real quick and i'm like oh yeah sure if you want to and then like in our headset we hear all right you guys ready <laughs> and he's like oh shit <laughs> um yeah but that that first one's always so nerve-wracking and at yep. the time we were like in a stadium like 300 miles in the air looking down at the world games like whoa and uh it wasn't live which was cool you could mess up and i think we ended up actually going to the nitro uh, not the nitro circus studios but they they rented out like a uh uh like a recording studio and me and Matt Mickey went there and like we redid all of our audio oh, yeah. <laughs> cuz <'Cause, laughs> we were like so like pretty bad like <laughs> i was nervous as hell so i had no energy i was like not being hype at all yep. and uh every time somebody did a trick i would i didn't sound excited can you give us an example anything. of what it sounds like dude they, they i'm pretty sure they uploaded the original audio oh, on God. youtube because oh, i watched it i watched it a few weeks ago and i was like why do i sound like that <laughs> <laughs> and you, yeah i think it's just like world games whatever 2016 it was yep um yeah i just i sounded i just sounded miserable <laughs> like, <laughs> like i had no idea what i was doing and yeah so we, we ended up going to the studio and, and redoing all of the vocals that's fortunate <laughs> well it's awesome that they trusted you to bring you back the next year too because obviously uh you know not to not to pat our own backs but the feedback we got after uh the last world games was super super positive and oh yeah you know, I'm just doing color. You're doing all the heavy lifting with yeah. the the play by play, and I think how comfortable and confident you were made it that much easier for me because it was all completely well, new. But me. being with you, it was it was much easier than it definitely would have been had I been with someone I didn't know. And you know, right. especially being out of country and stuff, it was it was awesome. Yeah. So I'm glad they brought and you I, back. I and, can totally understand that, and that's why when you know I did bring you in the booth, and also with Raymond, like I said, you know, I try to make it. You know, it's not a big deal. That's that's the thing you gotta realize. It's not. It's not anything. It's not a big deal. Just relax. Yep. Just be yourself. Be normal. And like, it's all good. <laughs> like it's but only yeah, a part of the. It's only a part of the experience for the viewer. Like I was watching it from yeah. my actually my car. I was streaming on my hotspot with my computer because <laughs> I didn't want to miss it. And <laughs> awesome. uh, but it, it looked really good and natural from from my end. But mm -hmm. I realized it's about like. It's just, you know, background noises once in a while. And then we pan on to you guys, get some analysis. Yeah. And like it yep. just it just adds a, another dimension to the experience. Yeah. But yeah, you like it, it is not such a big deal. Like wh if you have right. that experience and that that confidence in yourself that you guys showed that day, uh, yeah. I, you know, it, it turns out quite good. And the viewers, you know, it's like a, it's like a football commentator. Like you right. only really notice when they try too hard and say something outlandish like right you know you, you don't want to be on the highlight reel that that's about yeah, it yeah exactly the hardest and, uh, part was just no yeah. shit or fuck <laughs> like that was the oh, tricky yeah. bit oh shit cool it's, so that's sweet. Uh, it's a big part of the the viewer experience which is why i was like really upset with like the isa world finals this year and like i love waza and i love white trash willie and uh waza is a pretty good commentator um he, obviously he could use some work i'm not gonna lie but he's pretty good you know mm -hmm. he he can hold it, but yep. Willie has no business doing that. He wasn't he wasn't good at all, and uh, it was really really a bummer to watch. Like I I almost wanted to turn it off because of the commentating. Was because, that the but, the street final or the park final or both? Like, I actually didn't end up watching the street um, this year. I just watched the park one. I didn't even watch the street one. To oh, be okay, honest. I see, I see. Um, and yeah, it wasn't like there was no hype. Like they were. They were calling tricks and stuff. They were just saying what the tricks were, but there was no real energy, and mm -hmm. it wasn't like like the commentating needs to rope the viewer in, it needs to like really make them feel like they're in it, like they're in it. This is the shit. This is what's going down. Right, and that energy that you're I bringing is almost that. the energy they're supposed to be feeling, right? And if you're not projecting that, then it almost gives them a false sense of like, well, was that actually that hard? Was that right. actually that cool? So if you're yeah. not if you're not giving them almost helping them feel the way they're supposed to feel, definitely it's going to take away from the viewer experience. And it's not the ISA's fault. Like they they tell me this, they tell me that they put my name in the hat every year um, and let them know like this is the guy that you should get for your live whatever. Um, and the event generally just doesn't have the money to to bring somebody out. Waza was already going to be there, and Willie was thrown in last minute. And right. from what I heard, he didn't even want to do it. 
I that's what I heard. Oh yeah, I think Hammy talked to him about this, and he said, "Yeah, I didn't even want to do that. Like they they just like asked me to do it last minute, and um, and, like want to take sit here and go. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And he he was he was probably baked out of his mind or something. I don't know, but (laughs) it sounded like I don't know if he wants me to say anything like that on here, but whatever. Well, speaking of baked out of his mind, we now have our our first guest lighting up a a spliff. Of course, you're in in California, so done to herb technically legal. (laughs) Yeah, I got this. Uh, banana banana split bruiser uh the brand is called fun uncle which i like to think i am shout out to fun uncle maybe they'll sponsor this episode of the podcast we should hit up fun uncle <sighs> like and subscribe <laughs> <laughs> so i wanted i wanted to touch on because they're actually uh, rounding out pretty soon but uh i know at turnstile like we touched on you did quite a few well, not you did but there was you know warranties and you took care of uh quite a few things actually you wore a lot of hats and one thing you did was you were team manager for I know Phoenix and possibly yeah. Grisp and, Grit and Crisp for yeah. the U.S. Yeah, and yeah. transitioning into Aztec, are you purely doing sales, or are you playing a little role in team managing as well? No, I'm um, just doing sales and like kind of just being Dom's right hand man. Right. Uh, we we're like perfect for each other because like I like to talk a lot. And he doesn't really like to talk at all. Right. And unless he's in like a super awesome conversation that he's like so roped into, he can't get out of it. But otherwise, hmm. um, I, I like to talk and I like to make connections. And um, so if there's like someone Dom wants to talk to, he'll be like, yo, can you like start a conversation and like let's get it going. Right. He likes um, to let his designing talk for itself and it definitely has. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Exactly. And um, <clears throat> so – yeah, I'm just sales, essentially. That's my only real job, but I like to think uh, we're pretty much partners in the, in it right now. Right. And, uh, and, and yeah, it's great. So he's consulting with you on like quantities to bring in and stuff like that, too? Yeah. Yeah, actually, um, we just put in our order for summer. Actually, we haven't yet. We worked it out. We were like, all right, we need a du- like double everything, basically. Right. Because, <laughs> because we, we can't do this anymore where we like get products and it's gone all of a sudden we need we need to be able to sell consistently right throughout the year and uh then we talked to nicole from the phone <laughs> like she's like you got you guys are like fucking up she's like you guys need to get like five thousand completes and we're like are you out of your mind <laughs> five, <laughs> five thousand completes that's like a lot of fucking money to drop yep and uh, of course we're not going to get five thousand completes <laughs> but uh no it's I'm a gonna, lot of completes I, if there's a problem too to, uh, what there's a lot of, it's a lot of completes if you find a flaw too yeah totally like, totally totally it's a hu- it's a huge risk as well to make these huge batches also yep. it would sell like you yeah. just don't want you want to be be sure the product is proven every time so it's kind of a balance yeah. to, to strike. exactly and we we are coming out with a, a lower end complete uh in the summer um like somewhere the one, if, 150 price I'm range say the name of it or anything yeah it'll be i think 160 right so about, <laughs> like about, two, about 200 Canadian. Hmm. Right. Um, and that's like, that's such a good price point for like the first time buyer. Uh, and we need that totally. We're, we're missing out on sales in that area and letting, letting the man win on that one. But <laughs> that, not anymore, baby. But, <laughs> <laughs> and obviously the man, that would be, uh, I guess, more of the corporate side of the industry. And what's it been like watching everything sort of shift this last few years? It's, it's, it's no, it's, it's been no, awesome, uh, man. It, yeah, the it's, amount it's, of people that have called me and said, fuck lucky. I'm not buying from them anymore is great. And then nothing against like Brian over at lucky and stuff, but like, what are they doing for us? <laughs> They're not doing anything. They're still lining Tanner Fox's pockets with money. And yeah, John Marco is awesome. And they treat him pretty well, but I think he could have it better with somebody else. And, uh, yeah, it's like, and I, I don't know, they're they're not doing anything new. They haven't come out with new products this year, which like the vault again, they're like pissed about. Right. So, like, yeah, they literally have put out nothing. Like they, there's nothing new. They added dropouts <laughs> to the Evo. Like, <laughs> sick. Yeah, <laughs> and it's definitely. I'm glad you touched on that. It's it's because uh, I I still work part time at the shop here in Montreal. And we bring the Tanner Fox scooters in because they do sell, but it is a double-edged sword because I would much rather have someone who spends a lot more time riding and is still dedicated to the sport. I'd, I'd much yeah. rather have their name on a complete that's getting, you know, pushed. So right, it's, but it's, it, w- it obviously wouldn't sell as much. Unfortunately, and it's, <laughs> it sucks that it's like that's that's the deciding factor and why it's still a right. thing, you know? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. At, at, I mean, I, you got you to gotta look out for your business. So, yep. like... You know, if that's what the industry wants, that's what you give them. But it won't be forever because all these kids are going to grow the fuck up 
Well, it's a bit. And, it's a bit short term, almost. It's like a short, yeah, short minded yeah. thing. It's not a long term, uh, mm-hmm. like way of going about it. And it's right. been cool and, I mean, to watch the shift with like the vloggers. Like the, they all like not all of them. Like Raymond is really great at doing his YouTube thing because he still hasn't abandoned scooters and he never will because yep. he freaking loves scootering so much. Shout out to Raymond. Uh, yeah, but then you you look at the Bo Bros who gave that shit up a long ass time ago. Like the second they saw any type of YouTube uh, success, they're like, "All right, fuck scooters. Let's do the shit that people are watching." What is and it's it? It's like, all right, so you actually didn't enjoy this, the bro- Bo Bros. Like, yeah, I know, I know who they are, but like, oh, what yeah. do they do now? I don't watch the oh, vlogs. We don't watch them either. I, I but know. They, they, okay, like, just no, know. no more scooters. The last, the last thing I remember was stuffing trampoline with stuff and then jumping yeah, into like, it. Yeah, like trampoline stuff, uh. probably cars too. I don't fucking know. Okay. Right. All right. Cool. cool. Um, and then like the funks got weird, and now now they like I saw a video like the other day like they like broke up with each other. Wait, what? <laughs> so they're not getting along, Corey and Capron yeah, they, are not seeing eye to eye. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's like it's bound to happen because you're just forcing each other to do dumb shit. They'll get day. back together in the next season. Don't worry. Yeah, exactly. Right, it's a fucking reality show. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like, uh, yeah, it's so weird, dude. They just like sit down in front of a camera and like have a have like a serious conversation that they should probably not be fucking filming. <laughs> about like serious like family issues that they're having like brotherly issues oh, no. it's like dude turn the fucking camera off punch each other in the face and get <laughs> on with it dude my girlfriend <laughs> cheated on me with my brother and he's right here to discuss it with me for our vlog <laughs> oh yeah. no that's uh i don't i actually don't know. i'm totally bullshitting right now but if that's the type of thing that they're getting into it's far far from it scooters was, it was sure. something about not they didn't like each other's ideas and they, they <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Well, I don't like these ideas for the videos. It's like, dude, just shut up and go ride your scooter. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of in the past. <laughs> it's the answer to a lot of problems. Shut up and well, ride Corey, your scooter. Corey still rides a, a, quite a bit, I think. And Capron probably does, too. Right. They have, like, stopped riding. They just really stopped, like, being in it. Like, they were super into the scene and stuff back in, back in the day. and like, yeah, Even, like, going, years ago. Going to Scooter Hut and then, like, you yeah, know, doing all, all the, the pro series. Yeah, right when they switched from Lucky to uh, to Apex, I feel like they were really into it, if that was the switch, if I yeah. remember correctly. And yeah, some yeah. guys right now that show no sli- signs of slowing down is the Ethic guys. With the six yeah. months later video, like, just came out. We got to put the link in the in the description, but this video yeah. is amazing. It's amazing. Like, we got Jake's really videos really coming videos. out on uh, on Friday. I already yeah. touched on it, but Cap Gun was Dude. unbelievable. Yeah, we, and uh, Steel Curtain too is insane. On deck thing? Yeah, of course. We actually shared it on the Trinity uh, oh, Instagram because Broar nice. Broar rides for us, so we wanted to, to to support him, help him out. So I'm it, bummed because like I voted, and then like Jake's videos coming, coming out on Friday. Yeah, exactly. Mm. <laughs> so now I'm like, how do I switch? No. Yep. <laughs> I and all this to say, it's a good time for for Dude. freestyle scooter videos, man. Go, yeah, go so check it out. Go check out the good ones too. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, uh, fucking even Parrish's video came out this year. I heard. Like Paris's time's up part. Yeah, it was good. His purpose part. That was like this year, so you could even vote that if you want. Steel and Steel then, Curtain was good too. Obviously, yeah. Aztec shout out to yeah, you guys. Steel that Curtain was amazing. It's great. Um, Quite like the it. the speak video and uh, the other one that came out. Like Nate Gendron's part was crazy. Yeah, in a and, speak uh, in Talisman. Yeah, and then um, uh, yeah, Kevin Clausen's video. That was that was unbelievable. That, that was my vote. That was my vote for the best, just because. Kevin is like so fucking underrated and underknown. Yep. Um, and he fucking came out with a work of art that he's been working on for three years, and it was there was so much variety in it, and he got so buck. Like some of the stuff he did yep. was like, no way, that's not real. And uh, he's just the nicest dude in the whole wide world. And I think Anton did a great job behind the lens yep. and in the editing. It was just a overall just an amazing. High definition part. Yeah, I mean, one one thing you touched on there that I like is you brought up uh, uh, Antoine's work, Anton Antoine Anton Anton. Anton's work. (laughs) Shout out the Paps. (laughs) So you brought up uh, Anton's work, and it was amazing, and it it showed that it was properly produced, well filmed. (laughs) They took their time. It wasn't just let's go out and hammer out clips. Let's properly, you know, do this. It was a real work of art, and. It's unfortunate because I know a few dudes who have like videos come out and then you check the comment section. The first thing to come up is like, oh, I wish this was better filmed or I wish this was, you know, yeah, better produced. So, so it's, 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 it's crazy when you have 
that that right that combination comes together so you, you've got the right rider who's in the right mindset yeah. who's motivated and you get this a filmer who's also in the right mindset also motivated and then they come together and then you give them enough time there's no deadline they do what they want and they're satisfied with what they get it's it's amazing when all of that comes together and i, yeah. I totally agree kevin's video is an excellent example of that and, and you know what is coming out too like, soon benji's what? part yeah uh ben lemieux Bruce? one of our riders from montreal super super low fat key. pizza oh, slut really? He's, he's a slut. Is fat, pi- at so, fat pizza oh, slut. Oh, fat his... pizza slut. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know that guy. Yeah, so he he's been working on a part for like, well, it's been like three years where he's like, all right, my part's coming out this year. All right, my part's coming out this year. And then he'll film for like six months. Then he's like, all right, all my stuff is too old. I'm way better now. We're gonna get rid of this. We're gonna... It's been like three How years of that. Do that exactly. Dude, that's like so frequent. John Dev had a whole part that just it went away. Oh man, it, it's like it was like so fucking good, dude, and they just mm. like never got put out. <laughs> <laughs> it's in it's in the the archive somewhere and it'll never be seen oh that's it'll, brutal it'll like upload it in 10 years and, and it'll be like never before seen footy the lost tapes well, anyway this is the year for benji yeah this so. is the year because benji's video yeah. it's all filmed we're good to go clovis is working on the edit and uh it's heavy man there's a lot of stuff in there that like it's it's a lot of montreal spots and nice. he's also done a spot that hasn't really been done outside of like i think one vmxer Hmm. And he, he he's really got something something cool coming in, and it was hilarious. We brought him to the Boston Street Gym, and everyone's like, "Who who the fuck is this guy? He's dressed like Louis Oppel, <laughs> super tall, throwing hammers all day." And he's like, "If one more did person calls to, me Louis Oppel, come to our house? Did you come to our house that one time? Benji, no, 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 no. Okay, no. Nah, this there is there's a, this is a lot French. of you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> you came, Lloyd. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It was. Yeah, there's been a lot of movement in the house apparently since, but there was a lot of movement then as well. <laughs> there was a lot of Fre- there's more French people in my house than English. Speak. That's right. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> and, uh, how, how is your French, Jake? We, we've never really touched too much on that. You don't fuck with it much. Oh, on that. That's, that's, all I, that's all you got, dude. I was talking. Okay, uh, you know Mattis Cook. Yeah. So me and him talk once in a while through like the Trinity, and he was asking about our fork and stuff, and then we got into like stories about riding and stuff, and he was saying like, oh man. Uh, uh, when I went to uh, chill with Benji, Frying, he had taught me like, you know, two uh, two things, and it was tailleur and tabernak. <laughs> <laughs> was it? Yeah. Uh, it's so the funny. I know that is from fucking Goon. Because yeah. it's the best movie that's ever been made. Well, you, there's a Goon too. You know that, eh? <laughs> oh, yeah, buddy. I watched that one countless times. Man, too. Goon, Goon 2 is filmed like not far from my parents' place. Oh, really? Yeah, like 40 Dude, minutes I've been, I've been place. back on the Letter Kenny lately. That's like my freaking show, man. Man, I feel like Letter Kenny was really, really good, and I can totally relate. I'm from a town called yeah. Perkins Field. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? There's more cows than people where I was from originally. <laughs> so I can totally relate to that. But the last season's is kind of dropping off for me. I'm not going to lie. The, yeah, the one they just dropped, I was like not too stoked on. With like a TV they just, show and whatever? They were, they, were, they were literally just like on a TV show the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I, that, that like season kind of killed it for something. me. Yeah, exactly. It, it, they lost <laughs> the creativity, but the start was unreal. And even when it was just a YouTube series, it was hilarious yeah. and highly quotable. Heck yeah. Hell yeah. Sweet. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to run, boys. It's 6 o'clock. Yeah, no stress. I know you're headed to your uh, Jay and Silent the, Bob. Yeah. Dude, yeah, they're, so they're doing like this tour, like uh, U.S. tour, premiering it all over the place, and they they're just going along with it, and they're, they're going to get on stage and probably say some funny shit because they're funny guys, and uh, we're going to watch <laughs> this movie. Hopefully, it's good. Hopefully, it's not like burnt. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sure it'll be good, and uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to to sit down and have a nice uh, nice conversation with us. And you know, moving forward, we'll always keep you in mind. We'd love to have you on uh, another time for sure. Uh, anything you want to say or anyone you want to shout out before you head out? Uh, I love everybody equally. <laughs> all all the people, I love you. They know who and they are. <laughs> all the people of the world, there spread love. <laughs> no more hate. Except for Badger. Fuck you, Badger. (laughs) Shout out to Badger, man. And that's it. Sweet. Well, awesome. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to sit down with us, Jake. And like I said, we'll definitely try to have you on uh, whenever we can. For anyone who doesn't follow him, it's Neckbeard on Instagram. And you should also follow Brillo Brands. Keep up to date with Aztec and what's going on. There's no C in the neck, though, because you can't see my neck, though. Boom. Mm, I see now. You get that? That's a good one. (laughs) Singer. <laughs> yeah, th- I I appreciate you guys having me on. Keep me in mind. This is great, and you guys need to keep doing this because we need more shit like this for us old guys that really don't have much else to do but sit around and watch other old guys talk about 
<laughs> reminiscing <laughs> for 15 or 20 years <laughs> oh yeah we'll keep making them as long as people are enjoying them so Hell yeah. pleasure having you jake and really. i'll try to ride my scooter more there we're gonna go. we're gonna hold you to that if by the next time we've have you on you don't have half a part filmed <laughs> well since you quit your job you had a bit more time right so no, he's taking up the, po- the, the poker time now oh, it, takes yeah. me like two year- it takes me like two years every time to film a part oh, I so not. i have like another year i think That's at this point enough. and I, I have zero clips so i I'm can't gonna, remember I'm my last part i'm, I'm not gonna be the one to judge <laughs> you on that dude i'll start soon <laughs> my man all right well enjoy jay and silent bob say what up yeah. to all the boys in the house and sure. uh we'll, we'll, we'll keep in touch as usual my man sweet thank you boys all right pleasure peace so, jake well, that was fun. That was fun. I guess that was our first guest to uh, to light up hmm. mid podcast. Obviously, if you're underage, maybe not be, be well, lighting up. <laughs> well, Matt vaped. So, what's better, lighting up or vaping? I don't know. The great debate. They're both stigmatized. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! All right. Well, this is going to conclude episode number twelve of the podcast. We really appreciate everyone who's stuck it out and listened to us. We obviously shout out to Jake for coming on and uh, lighting up. T- you know, getting into the details, not afraid to get into the weeds a bit, talk about his experience at Turnstile. Hopefully everyone's learned a thing or two about the industry and how it works and check back in in two weeks for episode number 13 with a guest who we're not going to tell you right now. You'll have to check in to see who it is. Any, uh, any last words, Lloyd? Always a pleasure doing these, man. It is a hell of a good time. All right, we're headed out. We're going to go brave the cold, brave the snow and, you know, maybe go snow scooter or something. Eventually, uh, it's, it's all got to be built up in my apartment but we're working on it <laughs> it's all wax now Th- shout out to cody for waxing my board and my my snow scooter skis all the powder the powder skis are ready to go I'm, oh yeah i'm really excited no excuses now you'll definitely see yeah. some clips of us riding the snow scooters real soon all right we got to cut this off but uh, thanks everyone for sticking around and we'll see you on the next one